Welcome back to the SAT System channel, where we explore the digital trends, global markets, and investment strategies shaping the future of wealth. If you watched our earlier video on the Genius Act, the groundbreaking U.S. law bringing regulatory clarity to stable coins, then this episode is your comprehensive investment guide. Since the recent IMF Future of Finance seminar in Washington, it's clear that digital assets are no longer on the fringe. Governments, central banks, and private innovators now share a common message. The future of money is digital, and it's happening now. This video is packed with critical insights. From policy direction and technology trends to specific investment opportunities, Stay tuned until the end so you don't miss key information that could shape your understanding and your portfolio. Today, we'll focus on where the money will move, which industries will drive growth, and how investors can position themselves early as the digital dollar economy scales globally. So, why are the Genius Act and global policy such powerful market catalysts? The Genius Act transforms stable coins from a fringe experiment into a regulated, institution-ready financial instrument. Now, the IMF, a global monetary authority, is also signaling that digital assets and stable coins are part of the big picture. Under Genius, every U.S. stable coin must be backed one-to-one -one by cash or short-term treasuries, with independent audits and monthly disclosures. That requirement alone forces massive capital flows into high-quality, liquid assets. But the IMF panel added a new dimension. Global coordination, regulatory harmony, and interoperability are essential if stable coins are to scale responsibly. Authorities like Singapore's mayors, the IMF itself, and private sector leaders all emphasize that fragmented rules and siloed systems are a key risk. So the investment cycle is now powerfully reinforced by both capital demands and policy momentum. This leads us to the first major opportunity, the treasury and money market boom, because regulated stable coins demand matching reserves in U.S. treasuries. A significant portion of capital must follow. If stable coins scale toward $1 trillion in circulation, that's $1 trillion in new demand for government debt. So who benefits? First, asset managers like BlackRock, Fidelity, and State Street, who already dominate treasury and money market operations. Second, providers of treasury ETFs and money market funds that manage short-term liquidity products. And third, banks and trust institutions offering custody, audit, and compliance services for those reserves. As stablecoins scale, the demand for risk-free yield strengthens, quietly boosting traditional fixed income markets. And with the IMF's alignment, Nations may increasingly use stablecoins in international liquidity frameworks, reinforcing cross-border capital flows into treasuries. Next up, the infrastructure and custody providers. Under this new regime, secure custody, compliance, and auditing become foundational non-negotiable parts of the stablecoin architecture. Potential winners include institutional custodians like Anchorage Digital, Fireblocks, Coinbase Custody, and BitGo which are bridging crypto with regulated financial infrastructure. Then there are the analytics and compliance firms like Chainalysis and Elliptic, which are essential for a ML, sanction screening, and transaction forensics. Don't forget the major audit and legal firms like Deloitte, PwC, and KPMG, which are expanding their digital asset assurance practices. These firms are the backbone of trust in this ecosystem. The IMF meeting reinforced that transparency and consistent standards must accompany scale, making this infrastructure sector more mission critical than ever. Now, let's talk about payment networks and fintech integrations. With stablecoins legitimized, fintechs and payment networks are perfectly positioned to absorb transaction volume onto the blockchain. Think about companies like PayPal, Stripe, Block, Visa, and MasterCard. These platforms can now clear payments with U.S. regulated digital dollars, cutting latency, costs, and foreign exchange friction. This unlocks incredible use cases. Instant cross-border settlement without the swift lag, lower merchant fees with near-zero FX spreads, and embedded finance models like streaming payments, micropayments, and new subscription models. 
the IMF panel underscored that interoperability, not isolation, will determine whether these innovations take hold globally or just remain regional experiments. Of course, we have to look at the stablecoin issuers and their strategic partners. With the Genius Act, we now have permitted payment stablecoin issuers, certified entities authorized to issue regulated digital dollars. Key players to watch include Circle, with its USDC, which is already deeply integrated with financial institutions and transparent about its reserves. PayPal is another, bringing consumer trust and massive scale with its puce. And keep an eye on future entrants like JP Morgan, Fidelity, BNY Mellon, and Citi. These institutions could become powerhouse issuers. They won't just own transaction volume, but also settlement networks, liquidity flows, and the data backbone of the entire digital dollar system. The IMF emphasized that success here will depend on global connectivity and regulatory alignment across jurisdictions. The real innovation, however, happens at the protocol and middleware layers, the digital rails supporting tokenized assets, compliance logic, and cross-chain flows. Key infrastructure names include Ethereum, the default settlement layer for most stablecoins. We also have scaling layers designed for financial applications, like Avalanche, Polygon, and Base. Chainlink is the Oracle standard for bringing off-chain data, like reserve information, onto the blockchain. And platforms like Fireblocks and Circle CCTP are enabling cross-chain value transfer. Because the IMF and regulators repeatedly stress the need for interoperability, platforms that can seamlessly bridge blockchains and regulatory domains will gain a disproportionate advantage. Traditional finance isn't sitting on the sidelines. It's transforming. Under the genius regime, banks can act as issuers, custodians, or liquidity providers under federal oversight. Watch for moves from JP Morgan, which is scaling its Onyx blockchain for interbank settlement. Goldman Sachs is building digital asset tools for institutional clients. Fidelity is integrating stablecoins into investment and retirement accounts, and BNY is expanding its custody and tokenized asset management services. These institutions already manage global liquidity. Genius gives them a path to digitize, not simply disrupt the core of that business. The IMF meeting reinforced that coexistence, not replacement, is the realistic path forward. As transactions scale, the demand for data, compliance, and reg tech tools will explode. Reg tech firms will deploy AI-powered AML and KYC systems tailored for blockchain flows. Blockchain forensics transaction monitoring and tracing becomes mission critical for institutions and regulators. Cybersecurity providers like Palo Alto, Networks, and CrowdStrike will be essential for protecting custody and node infrastructure. And cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure will host the critical audit, compliance, and node infrastructure services. Following the IMF session, it's clear that monitoring, standards enforcement, and global coordination will be central making this data layer a key strategic battleground. If you prefer broad exposure rather than picking individual stocks or tokens, consider ETFs and other public market options. Look at funds like the Global X Blockchain ETF BKCH, the Amplified Transformational Data Sharing ETF Block, or the Bitwise Crypto Industry Innovators ETF BITQ. For exposure to the reserve side, Consider the iShares Short Treasury Bond ETF SHVT or the SPDR Bloomberg 1-3 to Month T-Bill ETF Bill. These funds blend exposure to blockchain growth, regulatory infrastructure, and treasury-backed stability, a particularly compelling mix now that policy and capital flows are aligning. Even with this alignment, key risks remain. Crypto technology is advancing fast. The market is still in early development and will be volatile. Steady DCA strategy helps to smooth out volatility, avoid leverage and margin tradings. Policy changes could introduce uncertainty. Cybersecurity and operational risks grow as systems scale. Smart investors will favor firms with strong compliance frameworks, robust balance sheets, and cross-border readiness. So, what's the bigger picture? 
The Genius Act signals a turning point, but the real shift is global. The IMF meeting underscored that policy, capital, and technology must align. Stable coins are no longer just crypto experiments. They are becoming the digital rails for the global dollar network. Just as the internet transformed communication, regulated stable coins will transform how money moves, making it faster, borderless, and more transparent. The systems building phase is here. And success lies where regulation meets innovation across borders. The Genius Act legitimizes stablecoins, and now IMF endorsement brings global weight. You are still early. Watch the capital flows, follow the builders, and invest where technology, policy, and infrastructure converge. Thanks for watching this episode of the Digital Trend Series. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. For daily insights on macroeconomics, stocks, crypto, and digital finance, visit satsystem.com. Please remember, this video is for educational purposes only and is not financial advice. Always do your own research and consult a qualified advisor before investing.